My name is Sergio Sanchez. This is the third episode from Developing Your First Peace Center Orchestrator Workflow Series. In previous episodes, we created a workflow, defined the workflow input parameters, created the workflow schema, and bound all the workflow elements with the workflow inputs and attributes. In this episode, we'll see how to write JavaScript code for the scripting task elements, create the workflow presentation, validate the workflow, and run the workflow. We start with writing the JavaScript code for the power on fail element. Select the element, then select the scripting tab. Click body next to the out parameter. Type the following code. Click VM from the in parameters, then click space plus control on your keyboard for the code completion function. Select name from the drop down menu. Type the following code. Select error code from the in parameters. On the next line, type the following. Again, use the code complete function. You can also use the API Explorer to search for scripting classes. Next, enter the following script for the timeout scriptable task. The script for the OK element is as follows. Finally, type the following script for the send email element. The workflow presentation is the next thing to do. The workflow presentation is displayed to the users to enter the values of the input parameters when they run the workflow. The first thing to do is to define the properties of the workflow input parameters in the workflow presentation. Select the presentation tab. Select the VM parameter, then select the Properties tab. Click Add Property and select Mandatory Input. Click again Add Property, then select Select Value As. Select 3 from the drop-down menu. In this way, the vCenter server inventory will be displayed as a tree, and the users can choose the virtual machine to power on from this tree. Next, you define the properties of the two address input parameter. Select the two address parameter and click Add Property. Select Mandatory Input. You can create the layout of the dialog box where users enter the input parameters. You can put the workflow input parameters in different display groups. Right-click the presentation node and select Create Display Group. Delete the new group element. Because this workflow only has two parameters, you don't need multiple layers of display sections in the Input Parameters dialog box. Rename the display group to Virtual Machine. Drag the VM parameter under the Virtual Machine display group. Select the presentation node and select Create Display Group. Delete the new group element. Rename the new display group to recipient's email address. Drag the to address parameter under the recipient's email address. The last thing to do before running a workflow is to validate it. Validating a workflow helps to identify and fix errors. Select the schema tab and click validate workflow. Click Bind Parameter Quick Fix Action for the warning. In the Chooser dialog, click Create Parameter Attribute in Workflow. Leave the default properties for the attribute and enter a description. To fix the error, click Bind Exception Quick Fix. Select Error Code. The workflow is now valid and you can run it. To run the workflow, click Save and Close in the Workflow Editor. Select the workflow from the library and click Start Workflow. Specify the input parameters and click Submit. You see a workflow token created that you can use to follow the progress of the workflow as it runs. Congratulations, you developed your first vCenter orchestrated workflow successfully. If you want to know how to develop more advanced workflows, visit pubs.vmware.com.
Thanks for watching and see you soon.